Καταλιάστε δίκη η εμφυρία. Σοφία. Προσκορυφθεί είδου δίκαιο επιστολή πάνω από ανάγνωσμα. Πρόσφυγε. Αδελφοί, ο Σπύρον φυτωμένο φυτωμένο και θερήσει. Και ο Σπύρον επευλογίε επευλογίε και θερήσει. Έκαστο καθώ κοβελείται την καρδία, μη εκλείπει ή εξ ανάγκη. Η λαρόν γάρδο την αγαπά ο Θεό. Δυνατό δε ο Θεό, πάσαν χάρη περισσεύσε ει εμά, ή να εμπαντεί πάντοτε πάσαν αυτά και ανέχοντε περισσεύεται ει πάνε έρχον αγαθών καθώ γέγραφε. Εσκόρπισεν, έδωκεν τη πένηση, η δικαιοσύνη αυτού μένει ει τον αιώνα. Ο δε επιχορηγόν σπέρματο πύρωτη και άρτον υπρό συμφορηγήσε και πληθύνε των σπόρων ημών, και αυξήσε τα γεννήματα της δικαιοσύνης ημών, εν παντή πλουτιζόμενη εις πάσαν απλότητα, ή της κατεργάζεται δι' ημών ευχαριστίαν τον Θεό. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. The reading is from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Brother, and he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must do as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly nor under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that you may always have enough of everything and may provide in abundance for every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seeds to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your resources and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for great generosity, which to us will produce thanksgiving to God. Peace be unto you, the reader. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sophie, your dear, who spent by you of a Yeah, he's better. 
children. Today, I'm going to speak about the prayer. Some people ask, how do I pray? I know many of us say, how do we, how do we pray? Anyway, uh, that's the that question that was asked of Jesus. He, uh, one of the disciples uh, said to Jesus, teach us how to pray. And what did Jesus say? He said, this is in the, in the Bible, by the way, what we call the Lord's Prayer. It's called the Lord's Prayer because it was Jesus himself who gave us his prayer. It's in the Bible. And how does he say that? He said he doesn't make he doesn't say that you, you say a whole bunch of words and you, and you just keep on going and going and going. Although that's another that's another type of prayer. But how do we pray? He says to us, teach us how to pray. And what does he say? He gives us this prayer. It starts with our Father. Now, how does this prayer start? He starts like most prayers do. Almost all of them is always to the glory of God first. He's saying, Our Father, you who are in heaven. And then he says, Holy is your name. Hallowed be thy name. Holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. So those are those are petitions or blessings to God Himself. And then he says, As it is on earth, as it is in heaven. And then the prayer comes down to us. And it says to us, Give us this day our daily bread. Meaning uh, to provide all the things that we need uh, for our for our well-being and give us the day our uh, daily bread. He doesn't say give us the day, get, not the day, so give us all the time, all that we need forever. No, it's a prayer for the day. Give us today our daily bread. And he says, forgive us our sins and we forgive those who sin against us. In other words, when we have when we have people that we argue with and don't agree with, or we're angry, or sort of say things to them, and uh, we can do all those things as long as we don't sin. We can be angry without sin, but if we if we curse them or or wish them uh, uh, something that uh, you know we should not wish them, one of the worst things you can say is go to hell. Actually, that's one of the worst things. And people say that all the time. That people go to hell. No, that's a that's a bad that's a sin. You can't wish anybody to hell. Anyway, so he says here that we forgive those who have sinned against us and deliver us and deliver us from temptation. In other words, allow us to have the, your strength, God's strength, the Father's strength, uh, to be able uh, to resist temptation. Because we're all tempted to do a lot of things. And we see things that we're uh, disobedient. To be for the children, if your parents say something to you, you're tempted to disobey. Well, don't be tempted. Just know that God says, obey. Obey your parents as you want to obey your parents. And we to obey ourselves, if, we, if we're driven into some certain lusts or whatever it might be, uh, that again, we, we don't want to be driven to that because that makes us do it. Temptation makes us want to do some things they said, don't bring us into the drive away those temptations from us. And he says, and deliver us from evil. So this is a this is a uh, this is a, a prayer that Jesus has given to us. And that and so again, it's it's because again, uh, for uh, if people live in monasteries, let's say, in monasteries they they try to pray all the time. And I'll talk to you about the Jesus prayer another time, but that's another prayer. But if we, if our mind roamed from here to there, as a matter of fact, we're here in church worshiping, and did, did we pay close attention and keep up with the worship of the Lord and hear all the things that we heard, or does our mind wander? Our mind wanders many times. So again, this is a short prayer. And you say it, you say it when you wake up in the morning, you say it when you go to bed that night, or when you do your, uh, when the food comes to you, you may say to our Father, uh, it's a short prayer and it's meant for us uh, to, to be able to pray to the Lord uh, with full worship, always blessing the Lord and asking for ourselves and for those whom, whom we love. So this is called, why is it called the Lord's Prayer? Because it comes from the Lord. It comes in the Bible, and he's the one who says it 
but this is what we pray. By the way, this is an official prayer uh, of the church, is the way we say it. And then we have the creed, and we're going to talk about the creed maybe next week. I believe in one God. We'll talk about that and uh, and what and how we uh, how we interpret that. Uh, how how is it said? How is it translated from the Greek to the English? And even this, how is it translated from the Greek to the English? These are uh, prayers that are uh, again given to us uh, by the Lord. Not to, not to, well, of course, it's given to us by the Lord. But uh, going back to the uh, our Father, given to us by by the Lord Jesus Christ Himself to all of us. So, how do we pray, Father? Our uh, this way. We say to Jesus, how do we pray, Jesus? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And may he bless you all.
By the choirs of the saints and the righteous will shine as the stars of heaven. The guilty part of servants who press, O Lord, and forgive all her offenses.
brethren in this holy church, the city, in the homes of those who celebrate today, and in, the, and in your whole world, and sanctify your faithful servants who partake of it. For you are he who blesses and sanctifies all things, Christ our God, and to you we give glory together with your eternal Father, and your whole life in the Spirit, now and ever and unto the age of the age of the Distribute them. 
uh, to this is for your, your giving for the whole year, next year. Put a pledge down. See what you can do on a monthly basis, a weekly basis. Some, uh, many of you, most of you, I think, give it all at once anyway. You give it most at once, and, uh, and, uh, and that's for the year. And still, you contribute throughout the year anyway. I know that. But anyway, uh, stewardship month for the year 2024. Uh, we're going to get the pledge cards. They'll be out by next week. We'll distribute them and uh, mail them to your homes if you're not here when we distribute. And always, do the best that you can. Do the best that you can. Uh, the, the round tables, uh, we're having a dance and uh, we're purchasing round tables instead of the uh, older ones because we think, it, again, it's more, uh, we can see each other, we can see everybody on the table, we can have conversations, I think, uh, more clearly. So we're getting uh, uh, tables and uh, by donations, if you wish to uh, donate a table, it's uh, $200 for the table. You may take an oval table with you. You can purchase the oval uh, the, the table for the two hundred dollars if you wish. Keep it at your home so when you have uh, celebrations at home, you might have it in the basement. And when Thanksgiving and Christmas comes, you have a large table where you can accommodate everybody in the family. So if you buy a, a round table, you take the oval table, and uh, that might be uh, that, that might be well for you. Church dance is coming on the 9th of December. Uh, think about that. And and uh, you can read the rest from the weekly that's in the, on the candle stand over there. Oh. When I was living in Boston about 35 years ago, I lived there for about three years, I remember I was across, uh, I, I was across the, the Long Avenue I remember exactly where I was. I saw the Children's Hospital. There's a Children's Hospital in, in Boston. And there was a, uh, there was a, and I looked across the street, and there was a man. Uh, he, was, he was just knocked out, I guess. He fell. Nobody knows. I don't know. But I was way across the street on the avenue, and I saw a priest, uh, a priest going, and he was trying to pick him up. He was trying to pick him up. And uh, the arm was loose, and he was going like that. And to my mind, there's the good Samaritan. He was an old man. The priest was an old man. And he couldn't do it. He just couldn't do it. But to me it was, I saw him, I said, there's the good Samaritan. There's somebody that, somebody, because everybody was walking by this way and that way and all that kind of thing. So anyway, that's the thought that came to mind. And it's still on me in my memory because I saw somebody doing such a good thing. He, he tried to help the, he tried to help the man. If he went to, to, to some authorities that were nearby, I don't know. But uh, he had to leave him because he just couldn't lift him up. He could barely pick up the arm. We all know Father Sam. Father Sam is a friend of the church. He's been here for uh, forever. I've known him for 30 years. And we've been co-celebrating. One day he was in Connecticut. He was coming back from Connecticut, going back to his home in New Jersey. And he fell asleep at the wheel. And he ran over, he was on 84, close to the church over here, he was on 84. The car rolled off the bankman and rolled over, and he was like upside down in the seatbelt. And uh, the, uh, people were going there. Uh, again, they, they took him off the, the seatbelt, and he was sitting on the side. And on the other side of the road, we all know 84, on the other side of the road, there was somebody that saw what happened, and he got out of the car, uh, his wife was in the car, and he and he went across 84 to go to where that accident was, and he didn't know it was a priest. And who was it that went to, uh, from the, from one side to the other? He happened to be an Orthodox priest. He was an Orthodox priest. He saw the accident, and he went across the aisle, and he saw Father Sam. Father Sam was okay. He was sitting down. And then uh, and, and Father saw him and covered with his collar and said, are you a priest? He said, and he was an Orthodox priest. How coincidental could that be? How many Orthodox priests do we have? Ever, anyway, or in this, in this, uh, ever, anywhere. And it was an Orthodox priest, and I said, wow, what a good Samaritan. He didn't know who that was. It happened to be a fellow priest. He didn't know who it was. 
but he got out of the car and went to the other car. He was, uh, he was assigned to a church in Connecticut. He was with his wife, and he simply stopped to the side so he could assist that person that had that accident. Even though there were other people there as well. But as a priest, if he had time to say a prayer or whatever it was, he was there to do it. He was there to do it. I'll just mention one other time. It was, uh, it was this year. I was at Poughkeepsie. It was at, uh, uh, the, uh, I believe it was the best for service. I was going home with uh, uh, Matthew, I think, and, uh, and, and Timothy. And we were coming home and going uh, on the uh, Franklin Delaware Bridge in, uh, in Poughkeepsie. Uh, I hit something. Boom, boom. We went all around the wheel. And uh, the car was okay, but I kept going. I went across the bridge. I went about 10 miles. And boom, the tire went flat. And it was very desolate. It was very dark. And luckily, I saw up ahead, I saw a, um, a convenience store up there. And I went over, and I started to, uh, to look at the tire. And we started looking for the equipment. We started to start jacking it up, trying to get it going, and, and, uh, and uh, trying to take the, the uh, bolts off. And guess what? Tires these days, there's a special bolt in there that you need a special key. You need a special key. Uh, and I didn't know that. And the key is in the glove compartment. So we jacked up the car. We wanted to change, but I couldn't change it. And lo and behold, there's headlights looking at us. Do you need any help? And this fellow came out, and he told us, and he changed his eyes. He said, do you have the key? I said, I don't know, but he looked at his glove compartment, and there it was. He changed that whole tire, and he got us home. He got us home. Wow, what a good Samaritan, so the, the way I felt personally. He came to me to assist, and, to, uh, and, I, and I was tremendously grateful. He couldn't take any money, and he happened to be a black man. <laughs> my neighbor, my neighbor, that's what the gospel says today. Who's your neighbor? The one who, uh, everybody's your neighbor. And to do what you can for that particular person. That's what the Good Samaritan is. Do you know that the Samaritans hated the Jews? Did you know the Jews hated the Samaritans? And who was it that when, uh, when, uh, when this, uh, this man was, was uh, a Jew, he was, and he was walking down a road and he was, uh, was beaten uh, almost half to death, as the gospel says. He was beaten half to death. And, uh, and uh, a priest, uh, uh, they called a priest because they still had the temple, the Jewish temple. And uh, the priest saw him and he walked on the other side. He said, forget him, I'm not going to go to him. You know, and then, uh, then a Levite, or again, somebody who knew the law, the Jewish law, the, go uh, the, the gospel, the, the, the uh, Torah, the first uh, five books of the, the Old Testament, he knew all that. He knew all of that. And he walked by. And who came to him, to his aid? The Samaritan. And he knew that he was a Jew. It didn't matter. He was in need. He saw it. Not only did he fix him up and put him on his, on his donkey and took him to a hotel or a motel or whatever it was in those days, and not only that, he paid for it because he had a journey beyond. And he paid for it. And he said, if this man is, uh, needs any more, I'll come back and I'll pay whatever you, you need to take care of him. He's talking to the innkeeper. And I'll give you whatever more you need. And he gave him money in advance. And, when, and, and, he, and he went off on the, on the next day. The question was, a lawyer came to Jesus and said, and Jesus, uh, he said, what should I do to gain an eternal uh, into the, to the kingdom of heaven? What shall I do? And he gives the answer. And Jesus said, well, what do you think? What does the gospel say? The Torah. You shall love your God with all your mind, with all your heart, with all your mind and, and spirit and soul and body. You should honor God, love God, and all that. And Jesus says, you answered well. You are to go into the kingdom of heaven. But he wanted to justify himself. And when he says, you shall love everybody and your neighbor as yourself. And then the man came up and said, well, who's my neighbor? And Jesus gives the answer. Not your fellow Jew. Not the one that has a whole bunch of money and you think, well, I'm, you know, I'm going to be close to that person. Or anything like that. Not, not things that, that, we, that we have tendencies towards. 
You know, we, yes, we like to be with our friends. We like to be with our, our own company. No. Our neighbor is everybody is our neighbor. Everybody is in our neighbor. And what, the, what is happening in this world today about neighbors? People are in the streets, how they hate the Jews. Today, all over the world. What? Really? Yes, really, because it was in your heart in the third, first place. Somebody brought out that incessant uh, 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 prejudice, and it brought it out for me. Now I can march. It was in there. I never said it out loud, but now everybody else is marching. I'm going to march too. I hate the Jews. And you have the Jews against the, uh, the Palestinians. Not so much. They're bombing and all that. Forget the war and all that. I'm not talking about the war, although the war is the issue. Uh, why would uh, they, everybody hates the Jews or, or we hate the Palestinians. And uh, now we have uh, uh, those, uh, those uh, Ukrainians now, now the Ukrainians, so we're not gonna we're not gonna help them and we're not gonna do anything to them. Really? That's what makes America great. Because we care. I'm talking about the country now. Because countries have character also. If you have the character to take care of your neighbor, take care of your neighbor. Even if it's an enemy. Who's taking care of Israel in, in many ways? America. Who's taking care of Palestinia, the Palestinians and supporting the Palestinians? America. The Ukraine, we're helping them. We'd even help Russia. We probably do it in, in, in other ways. All that. Who is the good Samaritan? Who is the good Samaritan? In a country. America is the good Samaritan in a country. And we are called individually, individually, to be good and compassionate and loving of our neighbor, our neighbor. The poor blacks, still going through it. If you had a black country invading somebody else, oh, there'd be, there'd be protests all over the world. All oh, those black people. All oh, those black people. Really? I had a black person that helped me. He's my neighbor. He's my friend. <coughs> And if I saw another black person, I hope and pray to God that I would assist and to do what I should do as a good Samaritan. That's our call. Good Samaritan. Not to whom you love, but to those whom you do not love. To anyone you can assist. And that's the lesson of the day. This beautiful uh, story of Christ that shall tell us who our neighbor is. Everyone in the world is our neighbor. I said that God asked that you honor them as you would honor someone whom you love. And may he bless you all.